We could have a disturbance developing in the Gulf of Mexico, but all the buzz is, will this get a name from the National Hurricane Center? What's up, guys? The meteorologist Jonathan Kegis, and in this video, we are going to break down this disturbance and the likelihood that it could become a name storm or if it just remains a non-tropical area of low pressure. We're going to look deeper into how a storm gets named in the first place, some of the meteorological and scientific components that go in to a system actually becoming tropical in nature. And then at the very end of this video, stick around for that. This will likely bring, regardless of if it gets a name, some relief to drought-stricken areas along the North Gulf Coast and Florida Peninsula, a pretty significant drought ongoing in Florida right now if you are unaware. Hey, before we get into this, if you want to stay updated this hurricane season, you have to hit subscribe. We're going to put out a lot of weather content this hurricane season about the tropics and beyond. So consider subscribing. Also, if you find this content helpful and you enjoy it, please give this video a thumbs up. It really does help us out a lot. Here you go. Here's our area of low pressure. As of Thursday, early in the morning, the green represents the rain associated with it. And as we take a look deeper into Thursday afternoon, there's all the rain. North Gulf Coast, Florida Peninsula getting it. Just as a broad look here, one of the components to becoming a tropical storm is you need to have thunderstorms wrapped around its center. That is one of the main definitions that we are going to take a look at in a couple of minutes. But clearly here, this doesn't really look tropical. Now, there is another distinction here, another designation, a subtropical tag. It's a hybrid between a non-tropical low and tropical low. Stick with me. We're going to get into that further down the line. Anyway, you see that rain expanding northward into parts of the southeast corner of the United States as we get into Friday afternoon and into the evening. This is all because of a big area of low pressure in the upper levels of the atmosphere digging down from the U.S. mainland and then getting out over the warmer waters, the jet fuel waters right now anyway. They're way above normal across the North Gulf Coast. The issue here is this is non-tropical in origin. Every storm has an origin story. And this is not being born from the tropics. This is being born from the the uh, from the United States mainland, that upper low, working out over to the warmer waters of the Gulf of Mexico. That's on Tuesday. You see this upper low kind of pinwheeling over the warmer waters, again, of the northern Gulf of Mexico before it kind of lifts back up, and that is what eventually pulls it through. So again, this storm already is not born of tropical origin, so it's going to have to undergo a transition. Could it do that over the next couple of days? It has a possibility, but it's very low. There's going to be a lot of wind shear induced by that upper low, and the air that it's going to be moving into is really, really dry. The only thing that this system could have going for it to try to, un to gain some tropical characteristics and get that subtropical tag is the water temperature, and they are really, really warm. So you see here in the North Gulf Coast, you typically need water temperatures of around 80 degrees to really help to fuel tropical development. We're close to it. We have area water temperatures in the upper 70s. Further south into the Gulf of Mexico, they're around 80. There's that loop current. If you're familiar with tropical meteorology, we always talk about that loop current helping to really rapidly intensify storms as they move out of the Caribbean and up into the Gulf of Mexico. You see water temperatures around that thing into the mid to upper 80s. This eventually goes into the Gulf Stream. You can see part of that Gulf Stream back out over the Atlantic. So really warm temperatures. It's going to stay away from that. It's going to be kind of developing right on in here. But the main thing when a system is fully tropical is it's getting all of its strength, all of its organization from the warmer waters of the ocean. We are not going to be seeing that here. Could it potentially gain some of its strength from those warmer waters? Yeah. But it's also going to have fronts tied to it. It's going to have the difference in temperature in the atmosphere to what we call it bare clinic in nature rather than bare tropic. That is going to be your, your tropical system. Anyway, to become a tropical cyclone, and there's also a lot of uproar. Why all of a sudden we're using cyclones with that potential tropical cyclone destination? That's a story for another time, the potential tropical cyclone. But a cyclone is a storm anywhere in the world. In the Atlantic, in the tropical season, in the hurricane season, we know them as depressions. Tropical storms, of course, and hurricanes. That all depends on the wind speed. But to get a tropical cyclone to develop, you need to have a closed center at the surface. You need to have the winds going counterclockwise, tightly packed around the surface. In addition to that, 
I was mentioning how we didn't really have all the rain and thunderstorm activity right around the center. It was kind of broad as we looked at the future radar component anyway. You need to have organized and deep thunderstorm development, we call it convection, in the meteorology world wrapped right around that center. So there are two components that you need to have. And then once it does get above 39 miles per hour, it will be it will become a tropical storm. It would, be, it, will, it would get a name. It would be a depression before that, once you have that closed center. But it would get a name once those winds get above 39 miles an hour. That's when it becomes a tropical storm. So if you do have those first two components, well-defined center, you have thunderstorms around the center of it being sustained, being maintained, then it's depression. Once those winds crank up to 39 miles an hour or above, that's whenever we're going to have the opportunity for it to get a name. In this case, there's an outside shot for this disturbance to become a subtropical storm. If it were to do that, it would get a name. But all this to say is it doesn't matter if it gets a name because in this kind of instance, all the impacts are going to be the same. I'm quoting The Rock on that one if you're unfamiliar. In terms of the rain coming here, again... If it gets a name or not, impacts are going to be the same in this kind of situation. Names are important for the bigger ones down the road when we get deeper into hurricane season to designate what is what. But in terms of the amount of rain coming, it could be a good dose Thursday into Friday here. Anywhere from an inch or two of rain. And some of these numbers are likely underdone. Computer forecasts always underdo the rain when they're talking about some tropical moisture surging in from the Gulf and the Caribbean. But you see it right there. A good amount of rain coming. The big time drought is in florida it's not going to bust the drought it is going to take a long time and if you want more information on the ongoing florida drought some of the fires some of the expansion of the severe drought status in florida click the link in the description you're going to get more on that but you see the severe drought extending from about really south of saint augustine now into the orlando area tampa fort myers has red around it we're in the extreme drought category. So one up, South Florida, Miami, we had some heavy rain last week. We got out of our drought, but some critical drought conditions ongoing in parts of Florida. We could get some help, though, in the Sunshine State. So that leads me to my next thing as we close this out. Many wonder, have been wondering, have we ever had a name storm? in april before and we did back in 2017 and the crazy part about this is the first name storm of the 2023 hurricane season is arlene the last time we had an april storm was 2017 and that was also arlene you see it was way out in the middle of the atlantic here is bermuda here is the united states mainland there's maine they're the canadian maritimes there's halifax nova scotia developed and kind of did a little loop-to-loop -loop here way out in the middle of the North Atlantic. Didn't hurt anything, but it hit those characteristics that you need. It had thunderstorms around its center, and it had winds greater than 39 miles an hour, and then had that well-defined center, that counterclockwise wind flow around it, tightly packed. And then it got named in 2017. Again, there was an opportunity for it to get a name, but I want to remind you of just be careful what you see on social media. Make sure it's from a trusted source. There's a lot of hype when it comes to that storm, regardless of if it does do enough to get consolidated to become to start to take on tropical characteristics. And again, it is a big if. It's a big if. There's a lot of wind shear. There's a lot of dry air. It's not going to be over water that long. A lot needs to happen for it to get that subtropical tag. But I wanted to make this video because there's a lot of buzz on social media talking about the potential for this to be named. And again, it doesn't matter because impacts are going to be the same in this case. Thank you guys again so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up. If you love the weather, if you want to stay up to date on this hurricane season that's coming up and all things weather, please hit subscribe. And we will catch you next time.